Welcome back to another batch of first impressions for the winter 2016 season. I'm Quilka, and today I'll be talking about a handful of short shows I'm enjoying and a few longer shows I'm just not. Specifically, Sushi Police, Shoujo Tachi wa Koya wo Mezazu, Maha Shoujo Nante Mo i Deskara, Oji Santo Marshmallow, and Kokaku no Pandora. So, let's dive right in. The origins of Sushi Police begins long ago in 2006, when Japan, in the interest of ensuring a high quality of Japanese cuisine abroad, launched the trial program of the Japanese Restaurant Authentication Plan. This plan, masterminded by Toshikatsu Matsuoka, then Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, began by inspecting 80 restaurants in Paris, France, claiming to serve Japanese cuisine. One third of these failed the inspection, making them ineligible to display the official seal or to be listed on the official list of Japanese restaurants in Paris, sponsored by the Japanese government. Such culinary confections as America's seaweed rolls stuffed with salmon and cream cheese and Canada's tempura battered onion rings are the reasons behind such a plan that has since failed to gain traction. But that's what the sushi police are out to stop. With a story told in three minute segments, bookended by an opening song by Japanese pop group Perfume and American band OK Go, and a credit sequence featuring fun sushi facts, Sushi Police is rather enjoyable. It really embraces its complete CG animation style and doesn't try to pretend to be in a traditional anime. The Sushi Police gallivant around the globe, shutting down inauthentic sushi restaurants even more ridiculous than reality, with French restaurants serving sushi rolls featuring bananas and Nutella and British companies teleporting sushi to customers in far-flung locations, which of course results in terribly delicious sushi monsters. This exists mainly to poke fun at the idea of attempting to control the adaptation of Japan's culinary culture by foreigners, with the overly righteous presentation of our protagonists and the presence of characters attempting to dissuade the sushi police from their enforcement duties. When the Japanese restaurant authentication plan was originally proposed, it garnered harsh criticism mainly due to Japan's willingness to adapt foreign foods into Japanese hybrid dishes. If you're a sushi fiend and can spare a few minutes each week, definitely pick this show up. Have you ever wondered what last year's Saikano would be like without likable characters, without a colorful world, and without the self-aware humor? Well, Shoujo Tachi has you covered. It is dreadful. Bunta is a hard-working high school student with no particular goals in life. After the play he wrote is performed at his school, he is approached by Yukino Yukinosta and introduced to the world of Bishoujo games. Her plan is to take the world by storm with a new game they will make. They set out to build their team, consisting of boring side characters lacking in anything resembling charm. I guess this could be interesting if you want to pretend for a little while you're working to make a visual novel, but there are better choices out there. Maho Shoujo Nante Mo i Dezukara is a simple anime short about a girl named Yuzuka. One day, on the way home from school, she stumbles upon a magical creature in the garbage, who binds her into a magical girl contract. Yuzuka gains the ability to conjure and control water, but unfortunately is forced to wear a revealing swimsuit to utilize these powers, a feature I'm sure is enjoyed by lowly cons everywhere. The show is a simple slice of life, as Yuzuka has become a magical girl but has no grand cause to fight for, and is more in the position of simply dealing with her perverted magical companion. There really isn't much else to it. Only the most passionate loli cons who enjoy Yuri undertones should commit to this show. <laughs>
While seemingly a raunchy form of advertising for Tabeco marshmallows, I was unable to find evidence that Tabeco is even a Japanese snack brand. With that insight, how heavily the show pushes the specific brand does seem odd, but somehow endearing. Anyhow, Oji-san to Marshmallow is about Higesan and Wakayabashi-kun. Higesan is an older, kind office worker who loves marshmallows. Wakabayashi-kun is a young office worker who loves Higesan. Wakayabashi regularly exploits Hige's love of marshmallows in attempts to seduce him. Hilarity ensues. This is a light-hearted and cute tale told in short episodes, each one ending with a marshmallow cooking recipe from two of the voice actors. There's little else to say about the show, and you should already know enough to know if you'll enjoy it. Kokaku no Pandora is an interesting beast when it comes to my tastes. I have been known to enjoy my Loli Yuri anime, both of which the show has in spades. Something is just missing. The story focuses on Nene, a human girl who, due to childhood illness, is a full body cyborg. She is moving to Kanonkol Island to go to school and to live with her aunt. On her way, she meets Clarion, a proper robot, who she takes an extreme liking to. Some hijinks ensue and we find out Clarion is equipped with a Pandora device that allows the instant acquisition of personal skills, like firearms, cooking, juggling, and emergency medical skills. Nene accesses these abilities by sticking her fingers into Clarion's F-port. Yes. Seriously. And then there's this guy. While the characters are somewhat likable and very cute, the show seems to be confused as to what it is. It presents itself very much like a more standard moe affair with lowly robots, but has this constant need to convince you there really is more to the story. What they present is so complicated and so lightly touched on, it feels like a poorly utilized framing device for a story about self-actualization. The end result is a show that I just can't like, no matter how many of my dreams are full of Clarion's F-port. Well, that wraps up this batch. Check out these other videos and don't forget to subscribe.